more hip hop. You want more hip hop? I want more hip hop. We've got a request for hip hop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into episode nine of Fifty One Fifteen. He is Tommy Frazier. I am Matt Verzal. T. Frazier, how are we doing today? I'm doing great now that the sun's shining when everybody has to go home. You know, I'm dreading that I got to go home and try to start raking the leaves in my yard. You don't hire somebody to do that? Shit, no. No? No, no, no. If, if, I'm, if I'm willing, able to do it, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. But, but I do have these two little girls that are cute little girls. I wasn't at home, so I had this um, the video camera, and I was out with somebody yesterday. And they came over, and they know that if they don't see a black truck in the driveway, yeah. I'm usually not home. Right. They came over four times so I could, so I could, see, could get an alert on my phone. They came over four times ringing the doorbell, ringing the doorbell. And so finally I said, I'm not home. You can't rake my leaves this time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that but now you got after this weekend? I did, I yeah. did. I by myself at home. Yeah, you know, just one of those deals. You know, when you're by yourself, no my game. Da- my daughter's with me. No game. You know, it's just like one of those deals. Okay, you do your thing. She just won't relax. I'm like, oh, let me just make myself a drink. Start watching football. And then one drink turned into two, and two drinks turned to three. Then she's like, I'm going to bed, Dad. I said, okay, I'm just gonna finish watching the game. And before you know, it's like six drinks in and three shots by myself. <laughs> So that's why I didn't call into the hangover. Then, I was going to say, then you got mad at me for not having you on Husker hangover on, on Sunday morning. But at least I was at home. That's true. You were at home, safe and sound. One drinking and driving. See, you hear me, young y'all, no drinking and drive. Safe and sound, much as the way Nebraska was with an off week of preparation coming off of a loss to Purdue. Um, tons of things for Nebraska to get better at o- over the bye week and, and lots to work on. But... I always laugh at this when Illinois comes up on the schedule because everybody before the year said, oh, my gosh, this schedule is so easy. There's so, there's so little they have to worry about. And I have a problem with filter at times. I don't always hold back. I'm one to just no, speak my mind. No, you, you, you I know. don't hold back? I know, hard to believe. But I, wow. I asked him one simple question. I said, Brett Bielema in his first year beat you, beat us. I said, I said how, how do you think that's going to change? you think he's going to regress? Like you think he's going to get worse? And everybody was like, I, I do. I think they're going to be worse. I said, like, well, he, you're crazy. He's, he's a hell of a coach, and mm-hmm. he's done a good job of building what they want to do well, at Illinois. Well, people forget to realize what he did when he was at West Coast. He took over for Barry Alvarez, and he kept going there. And then he went down to Arkansas. And for, like, the first four or five years, he actually had pretty good teams in Arkansas. He did. You know, so, so he's a really good coach. He's a smart office of mind coach. And he, he reminds me of the old traditional, we're going to line up and run the ball and see if you can stop us. And that's the, that's the, the pattern, that, that's the program he's built at Illinois, and, yeah. and it's working for them. You know, they're, they're ranked number one at top of the West Conference, right, West side of the conference right now. And, and it's, they, they, they're in the driver's seat because Purdue lost this week. It is, too. It's a thing where he knows he, he knows his identity. He knows what he wants to get done. He knows how he wants to do it, and he really doesn't care if you like it or not. It's not a flashy style. It's not a... a He's um, old school. He's one of the old blue-collar football coaches that you, in order to win football games, you got to run the ball. Did you watch the presser today, his, his press conference this week? There, no, I don't watch that oh kind God. of stuff. <laughs> it, he looked rough. I, I, like well, he, well, he looked like you may have Sunday morning. Well, that, that's just him. He's always looked rough. <laughs> he does. But, but because the person looks rough, at least he gets up and does his job on the Sundays and True. every other day. I'll tell you this, too. People underplay this, and they want to say, if you want to find a good college recruiter, right? Find one that drinks. Check out their wife. Like his, his wife, Will Muschamp, always made the joke about his wife. Somebody asked him if he could recruit this. You see my wife? Like, I'm really good at this. Well, she probably feels sorry for him. Fair. Fair enough. You know, so the ugly guy in school, everybody picked on. And she's like, okay, I'm going to show you one that I can make something out of him. Fair enough. We are out here at the Hill Varsity Club. We do have microphones. If you had any questions you want to ask or if any of Tommy's haters are in the building that say Yes, was, I want my haters to come out. Yeah, you, you don't know? have any haters. It looks like you've got smiling faces. Bring my haters out so I can chew your ass, too. <laughs> Amazing how that goes. You and I were kind of on the wrong side of that one. No, when I was on the right side. Everybody we else were, on the wrong side. When the prior regime was hired, we said, well, hold on just no, a second. No, There's no, a lot. no, no, no. Be, be honest. I said, hold on just a second. There's a lot that he's got to have to figure out. There's and a lot he's going to have to prove. Say, and what I said, I said, he's, no, he's not the I guy. Would, I didn't say he had to prove. He's not the guy. And you were, you were stern in that. Yep. Do you want to elaborate? Nope. Don't need to. <laughs> You're just going to stick with that? You don't need to because it, it, it all played out the way it did. You did? You went radio silent, too. I didn't need to say anything else. I just wanted all my, my haters out there. Just, uh, just, I'm just going to sit back. I said what I said. I'm going to sit back, and you're going to come to the dark side eventually. <laughs> And, it, uh, you know, we never wanted it that way, but that's the way it worked out. It happened that way, and now we're on. And the Mickey Joseph regime continues on. 
Um, big challenge for Nebraska facing Illinois. Coming off of an off week or a bye week, if they, if they prepare the same way they did their previous bye week, I don't know if the upset is in play, but I do think Nebraska can keep this game a lot closer than people are going to give them credit for. But the first thing they're going to have to do is make sure that they keep Tommy DeVito under control. Um, Illinois is a very balanced attack. It's going to be a big right. challenge for Bush and his crew. Well, I don't think this is a, a tall task. I think Illinois is playing really good, good, steady football. But if you watch a couple of the games this year, you know, they struggled offensively mm -hmm. and defense, offensively versus Iowa and then early on in the year. You know, so I just think it's one of those deals where if Nebraska doesn't give up the, the big plays or, or have the long, sustaining drive, they give themselves a chance to, to, a chance to win this game. But for us in, in Nebraska defensively, you're going to have to look at this. I, I can't compare Nebraska and Iowa's defense. Iowa's defense has kept Iowa in a lot of games this year. Yeah, yeah. Nebraska's defense is still evolving into what we want it to be. Yeah, but you, you know just what I do. Everything is about matchups. Mm -hmm. you know? And so when you, when, you, when you look at these teams, I think they match up well when it comes talent per, per talent. Mm -hmm. Now it comes down to which team is better prepared from the coaching side of things. Okay. And, and I think with two weeks to prepare for them, well, each team had two weeks. So I think Illinois was off last week. So I think each team was was was, was well enough prepared. Had them, they rested, they don't have a lot of guys right. back from injury. So which team is going to be best coach, better coach? Is what it's going to come down to in my book. So at the end of this game, as we watch this and break this down, and you're Bill Bush, are you willing to give Devito what he wants to do throwing the ball, or do you have to do everything you can do to limit already thousand yard rusher Chase Brown? I'll, you you got to stop the run. You got to stop the run because if you don't stop the run, then, you, then you're going to be out there all – defense is going to be out there all day. So you stop the run and force them to throw the ball. Then there's three things there's, there's three things that can happen in passing the football, and two mm -hmm. of them are bad. Okay. You know, one good thing is they complete the ball. They either drop it or throw an interception. Mm -hmm. So I'll take those odds over, there, over a guy running four or five yards at a time. So in doing that, who do you see – now, Nebraska's defensive line has – like Garrett Nelson can't have plays where he breaks down. Like, like he's got to be – technically sound in all of this because they're going to get some zone read at them. DeVito isn't afraid to run it a little bit. It's not his bread and butter, but he will, he will pull it if he needs to. Yeah, I think this is going to fall on the front seven on the okay. defense to where they got to be able to stop the run. Mm -hmm. For me, if you stop the run, then you make a team one-dimensional, then you can be creative with your pass rushes and put pressure on the quarterback. But if, you, if, if the team is running the football up and down the field like Purdue did, it's going to be hard to really get the, get the offense on the field because they're eating up clock. And, and, and Illinois, with their style of offense – they're going to eat up the clock. Yeah. They're with, going to shorten the game with the run game. Do you feel Nebraska has an advantage in the secondary where you can play a man coverage and then you can put another body in the box? Only if they're getting pressure. Okay. You know, you can do – you can say that, but if you're not getting pressure and playing man, now you got guys covering four, five, six, seven seconds. Right. You know, well, you, you can play man, but you got to get, you gotta get pressure. You got to get him off his rhythm. And then getting that, do you see Bush having to get exotic with that? Is he going to have to send blitzes at them? Or do you think Nebraska can kind of feel this out? and see? Because I'll tell you this, Bart Miller, their offensive line coach, has done a hell of a job. Right. Like Illinois' offensive line is technically sound. They're nasty. They play hard. And they're pretty relentless for most of the game. To get pressure in a one-on-one -on -one individual match, I think, is going to be tough. I think you find, I think you find your matchups that you, can, that you know you can win. So I think it's going to be feel right. so you're starting the game off, you're going to try to play as basic as you can. But then as the game goes on, you try to get more pressure on them. But you find the matchups because every offensive line has a weak spot. Okay. And so you attack that offensive line, that, 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 that weak spot in the offensive line, whether with stunts, but between defensive line or, or blitzes or corner blitz, whatever. Mm -hmm. But as the game goes on, they're not getting pressure from just rushing four. Right. Then you're going to have to blitz. You're going to have to. Yeah. You can't, because people hate when I say this. Sometimes you got to blitz the run. Right. And if you blitz the run and force them to throw the ball, Good things can happen then for you. Are you a run blitz guy? Do you think a run blitz exists? Or is a blitz a blitz? A blitz a blitz to me. Yeah, okay. But, but, when I say, but you know that on certain downs they're going to run mm -hmm. the ball. So you blitz because you, you know they're going to run the ball. So you're going to make sure you're going to take away every gap and force the guy to be, be special. Right. So a big thing you and I talk about on this, that first down play, when anyone has the ball, what's your maximum yard you can give up on that first down? Two. Two? Two. 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 You still behind Just the chains? Just reiterate two. Two yards, two or less. Okay. You said, what's the max? I know. I did. So if I say two, then anything over two, they win. So third or second seven to you is too, too easy? Too much. It's too much. Well, that's a pressure one right there. No, it's not. Two? Think about it. Three, three, three. Yeah, I know. We're first down. And, and we know that we know that referees sometimes get three yards, three Maybe and a half. Maybe this is a better way to phrase it. A realistic expectation. Yeah, realistic, <laughs> a realistic expectation. There we but, go. but if you're if you less than three yards uh, mm -hmm. on first down, then you, then you won. 
But if you anything over that, the offense still has the whole playbook open to them. So you're putting this in. Ty Robinson has to have a game. Yes. Like, like he has to be the dude of the game. Yes. He hasn't been it yet, but he, has, he, needs to be the, he, needs, he needs to clog up the middle. Right. So with him in that, in that role where he's got to demand and command the double team, like he's got to take he's, up at least he's, two. Now he's letting the linebackers be able to roam and do, do what they do best. Okay. So, so two on first down. If you're Illinois, and I think the one thing you'll know about Bielema is that he's willing to stick to that, okay? What is your ideal third down yards you get in Nebraska in to have that advantage in the game? Third and five, 36. So you get him third and five, third and six. So you're, you're two, you're net five on the first two right, plays. Right, And you're winning. You're winning. Because now you can't nine. Most teams don't run on third down for third and five. Yeah, that's a good point. Most, but Brett Bielema is not most coaches. Yeah, but he's not going to run on third and five. He's going to put you in the shotgun. He's probably going to get in the shotgun, try to run, run past option offense or quick stuff. But if he's third and two, third and three, now he can get, still get in two tight end sets up on the center and still run the ball, play yeah. action. If you get, man, if they have a steady – I mean, that, that, that staff from Purdue still baffles me where you're 101 to 52 in yeah. plays run. Yeah, you like got to get you, on the field. You have to. Like, like you can't <laughs> – just for what you have on your roster – your defense cannot sustain another game like that. No, and, and the sad thing about the Purdue game, it wasn't, it wasn't that like Purdue was beating them deep on pass plays. Mm -hmm. It was sustaining drives. Or just running the balls, three yards yeah. here, seven yards here, four yards here. 39, throwing a, throwing a slant route, getting a first down. You can't do that. When you, you, you have the, when you have the positive yards yeah. in your favor, 39, you're supposed to get off the field. The, the beauty of the – like, my favorite is, is third and four, and you get five. Love got, it. Just got one more than I needed. We're good. Right. We're going to run four more plays or three more plays. You see what happens. Like, when did it become such a thing? Because I deal with it on the high school level. We've got a running back, and he thinks every time he touches the ball, he is 72 cuts away from a touchdown. It's always he, been that way. It's he always tries been that to way. make all of them. But it, it, it always been that way, too. When the running back touches the ball, he's going to take it to the house no matter when he touches the catch. Yeah. But sometimes plays aren't designed for that. Sometimes you right. need two yards. The play is blocked for you to get two yards or three yards. You might have to signal that in the huddle. Yeah. Like, hey, this is a four-yard yeah. play. Just get four yards, fall down. But Here I, we go. I, but I, you, you've been, I've never seen a running back who got a handoff say, I'm not going go to I'm not gonna score a touchdown on this run. That's fair. But the, the play, the blocking, and the situation dictate everything that happens. You want them to be that way, but then the reality of it is, like, I got to get in there. Yeah, like, I got to get the first down. <laughs> yeah, right. It may not go for to the house, but I got a first down, and we get to move on. And I get another chance to make a long run. Exactly. We'll give you another opportunity. That one went very good. We just needed five there. We'll, we'll get you another chance to break one and go go all the way. Right. Um, as you okay, so we get Nebraska, in, or Nebraska gets Illinois in third and six. Okay. Okay. So advantage Nebraska. Now, how creative are you getting with your coverage? Do you think your team has evolved enough because we talked for so long about keeping it simple? To where the guys can understand it, just go be athletes and play. Well, Does well, it become more complex? No, now? I think then, then you, it's, at third and six, now you play the pass. So okay. you play coverage. So you play your zone behind and you drop, have your linebackers drop to the first down state. Okay. And then you let them figure out, try to find holes in it. Yeah. Then once they start beating that after you're trying that, then you just got to get creative and say, okay, now we got to send another guy to, to speed them up. Okay. But with third and six, and you, and you don't need to really rush anyone because now you're playing for them not to get the first down. Right. So you, so you put your heels at five yards, and anyone across your face, you lay them out. Yeah. It's simple. simple. Isn't it crazy how simple football is? Like, we talk to this, this, these people all the time. You know, our good friend Damon, or my good friend Damon. I don't know what terms you guys are on. You guys well, good? Damon and I are great friends. All right, you're good. When he returns phone, people phone calls. Oh, that's so then never. So you're but on, Damon's you're big on time terrible now. terms. You know, Damon got that new job. I on know. He's fancy. Now, now he's fancy now. He's so fancy. Now he's making he started... the big bucks. Now he don't want to call nobody. Now yeah. I got to go, go through his agent now to get to him. You got to go through his people. Yes. <laughs> have his people call my people, and we'll get to, eventually get the conversation. No, I'm just kidding. Wait, I'm just he used kidding. to not have people. But it's the, – the devil is always in the details, but the, 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 the details aren't that vast in the okay, game of football. Okay, Emma Foot. Thank you. I don't know if you pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very hard. It's not a hard game. Like, it's not that – the, the, what you said, putting your feet at five yards. Anybody crosses my face, I'm going to smack them. Yes. Like, when's the last time you've seen a team just commit to that? I haven't. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with hitting a guy when he crosses your face. No. I still remember watching the game not too long ago, and then Tony Velum. It was funny. He was a strong safety, a free safety. He came down. The guy was running across from him. I mean, Tony actually tackled the guy. Yeah. And they didn't call anything on it. Perfectly legal. So it's, it's perfectly legal. So if, if you cross your face, you hit it. Do you think Nebraska can get into a, a physical slugfest with Illinois? No. 
No, because Nebraska's offensive line is not set to be a physical a physical team. Yeah. You know, I think I think now if you want to talk about a shootout, I think Nebraska getting a shootout that way. But I don't know. I don't know if Illinois' defense is going to allow Nebraska just to run up and down the field like they like they did against Purdue. Do you think Illinois falls for that if Nebraska tries to just air it out right away out of the gate over no, the top? No, no, because the one thing you can stop is just slow the ball down, slow the game stick down, stick to the plan, yeah. stick to your plan. Yeah, it, it will definitely be interesting how Bush decides to combat that. I'm I'm more of a guy if you give up three, give me a third and seven. Now this next down I have to win for you sure. Got, you got to win it. I, I'm okay if you win a little bit on first down. I give up maybe two. Two to four on second down. Now I get you in that mid range. Like, okay, we could run it. I need to get uh, it, it, Looney is Looney Jr. is their offensive right. coordinator, but I need to get him a little bit nervous. He's like, well, maybe we should throw and, this because we're and, having and problems. And the key for Nebraska defense is that they can't give up fifty percent on third down conversions. If you're giving up fifty percent third down conversions, you're going to lose every game you play in. You know, so you got, and that's why you get. That's why they run hundred and one plays because you're giving up fifty percent of your third down conversions. So if they get that down to twenty to twenty five percent, then that's a win for them. Because now they're getting teams off the field and getting the offense more chance to run more plays. So you got to cut it in half. You got to cut that in half, or, or maybe thirty percent. Yeah, I was gonna say thirty. If you get maybe thirty percent, right? One out of every three, you're gonna get off, or you're, they're you gonna get, off get the field. it. No, they're gonna get it. You're gonna get it off the field. Two of three, right? In those instances, but it, it's, I, I think, just for the psyche. Like I, I think this team needs that positive, right? Those those first couple are, are going to be more important than maybe one later in the game. Like the first third down and, and we'll say five right. has but, to get off the field. Well, for me, I think the key from Nebraska, both sides of the ball, I know, we, I know we're talking about defense, but the key mm-hmm. from both sides, they got to wake up. They can't, they can't start the game and sleep like they did the first the last two games. Yeah. You know, when you watch the Rutgers game, they literally slept walk through the first half. When you watch the, the Purdue game, they literally will slept walk for a quarter. Mm-hmm. They can, you can't afford to do that anymore because now – you have everything in front of you, but the teams that you're going to play are going to be well coached. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to they're going to take advantage of you falling asleep. So you got to you got to come to the game lathered up. As like we said last week, you know, it's like a boxer. Yeah. A boxer who comes to the ring all lathered up, you know he's ready to fight. A boxer who comes to come to the ring who's not who's not, don't have any sweat on him, it's going to take him 3 or 4 rounds before he finally gets in the groove and by that time he's going to get knocked out. Do you think that has to do with them being on the road? They're making first couple road trips as the interim head coach. There's a lot going well, on on the well, road. Well, well, first of all, it, sh- it shouldn't take a coach for you to get loud up and get ready to play a football okay, game. Okay, so you're saying that's a player. That's though. a player deal. Okay. Now, all coaches, the coach is there to make sure that you're prepared to go out and do your job. But well, now it's up for you mm-hmm. to get yourself ready to go do your job. The other part to me, though, it's, it's something that they've struggled with for a long time is that who is the leader on that team? Like that, that to me, would be the senior leadership. It would be a junior leadership. Somebody in there that, that that room – Holds accountable, like, they we're going to follow they, they, that oh, guy. And I'm going to go back years. They haven't had a leader because the head coaches have always been the leader. Mm-hmm. They never gave the players an opportunity to, to be, become that leader. Right. You know, so hopefully that, that what Mickey's doing is letting the captains captain. Yeah. What we say last week, um, leadership, well, the team's own. Leadership reflects, uh, or uh, attitude reflects uh, leadership. leadership. Yeah. And that's a roller on the Titan line. Well, that's true. And those, and then remember that movie, that's when that team came together called the two captains got together and, and say, no, we're not going to let this happen. Well, the, now it's time for those uh, the leaders of the players on the team to step up and say, hey, it's time for us not to let what's been happening in the past. we got to do this. The coach is going to prepare us so much. I don't care who the coach is. If we do our job and we go out there and play, then everything else is going to fall into place. But if a coach got to get you fired up to play a game, yeah. you're playing the wrong sport. Correct. should be playing baseball. Yeah. One of our, yeah. <laughs> One of our members of our audience. I'm just saying baseball players don't really have to get amped up. It's all into these. Wouldn't this let her son play this football because it was dangerous. Yeah, it was dangerous. Yeah. I don't want a guy hitting him, but I want a 90 miles per hour my fastball coming at his head. Can a guy named Casey Thompson, can he be the leader of your organization? Well, he needs, to be, the leader of, he needs to be the leader of the offense because yeah. he's the quarterback. Whether he wants to or not, he needs to be the leader. Talk about that. Did you ever have to get anybody super fired up to do anything? No. Because I think I mean, what you have, I think we we were we were wired different though. Yeah. Because we had leaderships from the players when we when we both got got to Nebraska. People will laugh; they don't believe you how self patrolled that was. Yeah, like, we, yeah. I mean, Coach Osborne very rarely stepped in mm-hmm. when it came to decisions that were made by the team. You know, there there, there was only one decision I know that he really over, overlooked the, the captain and said, "Nope, this is my decision." Yeah. But anything else, if the captain said, "Coach, this is what we want to do," he, he it, it happened. And so I think they don't have those people yet because it's hard to have leadership, leaders, 
when you haven't had positive outcomes for a long time? When it's coaches or players will always model a coach's behavior. They will always follow along. Hmm. So, so to me, in this next set. So what are you trying to say? In this next set of games, you can interpret that however you'd like. I'm not. I'm in just this, asking you a question. It, I want you to. I, 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 I answered hey, the wait, question. Wait, 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 expand on that. I answered the question. <laughs> I said you can interpret that however you'd like. Expand on that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you see more and more guys throughout these last part of the season start to mirror Mickey and how he carries himself, well, how he I acts? Th- I think with the energy and uh, the straight shooting mm-hmm. that he gives the kids, I think that's what these kids wanted. I think that's what they love. Yeah. Because did you know where you stand with him? It's mm-hmm. not gonna be, you know, this or that. You know, the best, and he he's proven the best players are gonna be on the football field. Yeah, I don't care if you you can be. You, you look at Tommy Hill. He started the year off mm-hmm. at cornerback, and now he's a wide receiver because yeah. a, a, a true freshman came in and proved that he was better. Yep. You know, so that's that's what you that's what a leader from a coaching side of things do. That you that you just can't say because the guy's is older, he's a senior, he been he played, he transferred from Division One, that mm-hmm. he's better. No, you put the best guys on the field that give yourself the opportunity, the best chance to win the football game. It's an interesting commentary because I, I guarantee eighty percent of Nebraska fans when they first heard that was like, oh, he's gone, he's out of here, he got no. beat out for his job, because they just get used to it. They get used right. to that transfer portal. When you create culture and we create a, a, a building at Nebraska that that you are honest with kids, say, hey, this is what's up. Mm-hmm. We can get you to the field now doing this, or you can continue to try to prove yourself at this position. This is as honest as I can be with you. Right. Which one do you want to do to help the team? And, and you saw that when one wide receiver transferred, because Mickey was honest and said, you're not the number one receiver. Mm-hmm. And so his dad goes into the meeting talking to all, hey, you, right now everybody knows Trey Palmer is the number one receiver. Mm-hmm. Okay? There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Yeah. Now, now, if you want to be the number one receiver, then you got to do things that he's doing. Mm-hmm. And you, you didn't. So what did he do? Well, I'm leaving. That's the problem with the transfer portal. When kids don't get their way, it's these generation of parents who don't want their kids to play football. They baby them. And, and, and to where they're, 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 they're quick to walk out or quit something because they think the grass is greener on the other side. Mm-hmm. That's not the way life is. Yeah. You work, you get what you work for. Mm-hmm. And I grew up old school. You did. A coach telling me that I sucked. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to go and tell my mother that coach cursed me. I called me a girl or said that I wasn't very good. My, my parents were like, okay, you're probably not. Prove them wrong. Well, kids don't do that these boring days. Yeah. Because it's easy for them to run. Right. Then the ones that do, you know you have something special. Like, it, it, it happens in many instances where we had a kid that was probably our best quarterback, and he played receiver for us his junior year because he knew that would help the team. Right. right. But you, you know in those instances you have something special. You've got to make sure they're – they know their value in that. Right. And as I was saying about my leads being yeah. little girls, they, they just rang my doorbell again. With their, they had their rakes in their hands. And How like, much are you paying? Huh? How much are you paying them to rake Oh, they leaves? do it for free. Oh. I'm kidding. Yeah. No, I pay well when they do it. When, the last time they did they, they did half the yard. I feel like you would critique their work. Like, how old oh, are these? If how pay, old are these? If I'm going to pay you, each one of you, $20. How big is your lawn? It's just the front yard. Okay. And then 20 bucks out, a piece. And I gave him 20 bucks a piece. And then I go out and check, and half of the leaves are still on the ground. Did you make him come back out? And no, I just it? went ahead and did it myself. <laughs> so you're not quite that bad of a hard ass? No, no. You didn't walk no. across and ring their but, doorbell? But, 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 but I, I, find I, I did it because I love how they, they had the, the initiative to come in and say, hey, Mr. Frazier, can we wreck your yard? Mm-hmm. They didn't even ask for any money and say, hey. Right. And I'm like, oh, okay. And it's girls. Now, I, you don't see boys in my neighborhood doing that, but the little girls did it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, here you go. Oh, for us, and us, for both of you. Oh, thank you. So I think that's why they're coming back now. Yeah. They found a sucker. No, I'm not a sucker. Oh, that's an easy 40 bucks right uh, there. I'm not a sucker. Go Tommy, get. Tommy, Tommy love the kids. Wait till he <laughs> That was a good one. <laughs> wait, till, wait till he leaves. We'll get Dad's leaf blower here. We'll just blow all these out in the street. It'll well, be fine. I, well, I got one already, so I've been doing that anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions, just head to a microphone. Go yes, ahead and ask anything that you want. Live. That's what yeah. I want you guys to be interacting. You're yep. sitting shaking your head. I see a little sidebar conversation. What's he say? You know, come on up and, and talk. Yeah, go ahead. Give us something. Um, Nebraska, Tommy, we're both in the camp offensively. They've got to get Anthony Grant going. Yes. Um, can, how committed can Whipple be to this? Because you've mentioned many times how pass happy he gets. He does, and, and, and that was one of the knocks when, he, when um, Narduzzi said about him when he was at Pitt, even though they had success because they had a, a, a great quarterback in Kenny Pickett, that he was at times he got past happy. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you, you and, and you know, you're like, okay, when well, you got picky, you want to do yeah. that. But there are games where they were blowing teams out and he was still throwing the ball still mm-hmm. working on the run game. You know, so I think sometimes, even if the running game is not running, it still can work to your advantage because now you're slowing the game down. Mm-hmm. You give you at least your defensive opportunity to rest. Right. But and so I think there's times when it's not running, you still force it. Sometimes you can you run three plays. If you don't get it, that's fine. But I'd rather for you see you run three plays and then throw three passes that are incomplete. Yeah. So if you look at this, we'll, we'll I'll give you three three options. We have inside zone where. You're going to have two linemen double team up to a linebacker. You're going to have outside zone where it's a little more lateral movement. We're still going to work to those two same people. Or we're going to have what they now call a gap system, which is just pin and pull. So I've got somebody pinning down on a defender, and then I've got another lineman pulling out to block someone else. For Anthony Grant to be most successful, what scheme do you think fits his style best? Well, I think inside and outside zone. Okay. Because it gives him an opportunity to see things and have him cut back outside and set the block up. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's. I don't think he's one of those guys that can actually follow a lineman because he's not very shifty with his feet. Mm-hmm. But he's more of a zone type runner. So that one, two, three, third step gets in the ground. Yeah, I, I plant go. that me, thing and go. Know, where's the hole? Let me. The get decision it. has been made. Yes. And then he has. He's not one of the guys we're going to have makes a bunch of moves. He's going to get up the field. He, he's, and, low, he's, he's going straight north, south, or east, west, whichever stadium. Yeah, there's some stadiums that go east to west. That's all. That is true. So that's why I keep saying, oh, we're, we, oh, he's going north to south. Well, no, he's going east, west on this field. Yeah. Just so, stay away from those fields. Yeah, because there's not very good luck on those fields. No. Yeah. So, anyway, Anthony Grant gets going. Now, Now I think one of the underutilized portions of Nebraska's offense is that play-action pass game. But so much of that is reliant on the offensive line actually being better than they've been. Progress exactly. they can make in an off week. Can they make strides that are noticeable in an off well, week? Well, they made strides in the first off week. You know, because they, they made some changes. and, mm-hmm. they, and the, So, hopefully now – after playing three games, have a plan a game, and then a bye week, and then playing three games, now you know what guys can do. So now you can get the top five, five, top five, six, seven guys working together even more. Do you have a top five in your mind? Nope. Are you telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. I don't. You don't? I don't. Okay. I really don't. Not one, you, don't, you couldn't put five together? I couldn't put five together because I don't know half of their names. You got Corcoran, Lutowski. Once again. Hickson. <laughs> I just know they're all white. That is true. They're, there's not much soul on the offensive line. Are you saying they need to add some? I'm not saying that, but I think the little look color on that line, a little blackness on that line won't go a long way. What about some Samoans? That's, that's blackness. Oh, okay. I'm in with the Samoans. You can yeah. get five Samoans. I'm good. Yeah. Some Samoans are great. No, because I, mean, I, you know, you, you, I say that jokingly, but, but if you look at some of the top offensive linemen in the, in the country. Yeah. There, there are some black guys on the offensive line. Look at Ohio State. Yeah. Look at Alabama's offensive line. Look at Clemson. I mean, so there are some. Ohio State. Ohio, yes. I mean, so there's something to it because most of the time those guys just, I don't give a crap attitude. Yeah. And I think the problem with Nebraska's offensive line is that they, they want to be tough. They walk around tough, cause they're, but I don't think they're really tough. I think, they, I think they, their bark is, is loud. Yeah. But they bite. It's soft. It's like they have dentures in. When they bite one time, their teeth fall out. Yeah. Do, do you think there's anything that, that, that Rayola can do, that Donovan Rayola can do in, in this off week? Can, can you just go raw with it and say, we are going one-on-ones until five guys emerge. I will find you a position once this is over. I think that's probably been the best thing they could have done. Yeah. Because now you're sparking competition. Right. And football is competition. When and, it's done right. When it it's is. done right. And, and, and I think who also can help is Whipple. Okay. Call the things that you know they can do well. Yeah. Don't call stuff where they, they struggle in practice with it. Or you know that this offensive lineman has a hard time reaching his three technique. Mm-hmm. Don't call that play towards his side. Right. And I see, it, I see a lot of times where he's calling his plays to a certain side and the same guy's missing the same block, which means that guy can't make that block. So stop calling it to him and run it the other way. Or get him help in some, like alter the blocking scheme to get him help with someone. But I think, I think if you're trying to keep it simple, yeah. you don't, don't, don't mess with it because we will both know we've seen when they had to think about a lot of stuff. Yeah, it does not go well. It does not go well. So run things where they just fire off the ball. They know that I got to block here. Let's go. Yeah. Let, like I say, let Anthony Grant make the difference. Let him choose where you go. You just get on somebody, he's going to make three or four yards if you go going downhill. And you got to be quick with the trigger. I mean, you can't have guys that are in continually messing things up. You you got to be yes. able. Yes. 
Yes. It was one of the things I loved when we were watching them play uh, Indiana. Tackle wasn't doing very well. He, the tackle was now on the bench. Yes. And then yeah. there was a new tackle in. Like, the time to play favorites or play daddy ball is not in major college football. Like, if you are not doing your or job, you school, have to Or high them. school. Or high school. Yeah. Or high school. <laughs> you have to remove that person because it's detrimental to your team's success. And the other 10 guys on offense shouldn't be punished because that one guy has some certain rating or some certain clout. Like, you have to get these things handled. I, I, I've never seen a football coach or a football team win because the guy who's making all mistakes still in the field because everybody liked him. He was a good kid. Yeah. At the end of the day, your number one job is to help us win football games. And so if you can't help us win football games by you doing your job consistently, then come stand by me. Come stand by me. I, I'll get you a favorite hot dog. You can go ahead and have your hot dog You ever been to me. benched in your career? Did never, somebody pull never. you up, Phil? <clears throat> never. Never? Never. Will you attribute that to competitiveness? Yeah. Competitiveness and, and, and going out there and playing hard every play. Yeah. Did you ever think you were going to get yanked? No. Why never would I think I'd get yanked? I don't know. Just a question. I'm, I'm competitive. You know, no competitive think they're going to get yanked out of a football game. Do you think there's anybody in that in that organization in Lincoln that has that mindset? I'm pretty sure there is. I think Garrett Nelson has that mindset. Okay. I think I think Casey Thompson has that mindset. I think um, Anthony Gray has that mindset. I think Palmer has that mindset. I don't know if anybody on the offensive line has that mindset. Yeah. I don't see any nastiness in any, anybody on the offensive line. Wouldn't you love to just take a just a, a personal foul penalty on an offensive lineman for? We've got two called us in the past, but excessive blocking. You, I guess. Is there excessive blocking? Yeah, what, there is. Is, what is this, the blind side? We, we got oh, what are you talking about? Excessive blocking. What? Got a call twice in one game. Yeah. I was never, I've never been prouder in my life. Yeah, dude, sometimes, you, sometimes you just got to go when the whistle just hit somebody. Your boy Terman is screaming at me. He's like, what are they doing? I was like, we're being aggressive. We're being like, aggressive. I don't know what you want me to do. The one thing you don't want to do is take away aggression of a mm -hmm. player. Now you can control it. Yeah. But if, they, if you know, you're, you're good. for example, Zach Weger. Mm -hmm. Zach Weger is probably one of the most aggressive per people out there that I ever played with. And then did he do some dumb things out there? Yes. But the one thing that Milt Tenniper and Coach Osborne didn't want to do was take his aggression away from him. Right. Now they controlled it, mm -hmm. but he still was aggressive. So when you start taking away how a player plays, no matter what position they play, then they're not going to give you, they're not going to play their best. Dominic Rill is another one that comes to mind. Yes. Played a nasty, nasty game. Tony Finotti. They, they played within the rules and within mm -hmm. the line, but they, they never they got called for a, a excessive blocking, which whatever that means. <laughs> Twice in one game. But they still went out and they, they, they never changed who they were. Okay, so Nebraska offensively is going to go get into this game. Hopefully we see some aggression from the offensive line. They're going to combat a 3-4 three, a three, front, and then you've got two safeties up top. What's your best way for Nebraska, if you're going to see them attack this, to do that? The tight end has to be in, be in play. Okay. Are we talking catching the ball or blocking? Both. both. The right. tight end will have to become a very important part of this because the 3-4, a lot of people don't understand the reason why they're running 3-4 is because you get more skilled players on the football field. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you force that skilled guy, to, the extra guy to be, become a, a run supporter, mm -hmm. but you have a tight end who can block, yeah. you, you win. Because there aren't too many skilled guys, smaller guys that can handle a tight end that can block. Now, there's a luxury in it, too, because you have to have a dude playing that, that zero, that straight-up nose technique. Yeah, you have to. And so, so you, you get, you're getting matchups that you want. Mm -hmm. You're getting doubles all over the field. Yeah. And so, and so now the zone, that's why the zone schemes yeah. work. And so now if you got a tight end, that just becomes an extra block in the zone deal. Do you need him as an inline guy, or are you all right if they widen him out a little bit? And it, then... it doesn't matter. Okay. Because they, they got to count for him. Mm-hmm. be super great, too, if they could catch some passes. That would be well, awesome. Well, that's, that's – if you can't catch the ball in college right now, then why are you here? It does seem You shouldn't have way. to teach people. Here's, here's, my, here's my biggest hic hiccup. Why do you have to teach college players how to tackle? Mm -hmm. And why do you have to teach college players how to catch footballs? Oh, I know this. Because they've all come up through a system where it's not, that, it's not about that. The tack, it isn't the tackle, the fundamental tackle body on the ground that matters. It's the big hit. Like, like, they will pass and go for a big hit yeah, over a solid tackle 10 out of 10. But that's, that's, just, that's just football itself, even at the pro level. Mm -hmm. That's what they grew up, that's what they see. So everyone wants to mimic what they grew up and what they see. You know, you know I know I get on baseball all the time, but how many times do you see these pitchers now back when you go to Randy Johnson? Randy Johnson is going to throw, throw a fastball 90 miles per hour yeah. every time, force you to hit it. Right. Well, now you got guys walking players mm -hmm. because they don't want to quote, unquote, hit a home run. You're making $20-some million. The last thing I want to do is walk somebody. If he hit a home run, 
But I think my pitching is better than his, his, his hitting. Yeah. But it's that competitive nature, right? That's, that's what sports are. If you're, not going, if you're not competitive in sports, then why are you playing? It's bad with some of the youth sports because I think the fathers that are coaching are oh, far more competitive. Oh, these fathers need get out of the game. They get on my nerves. But they're far more competitive than any of the kids. My son is the best player, so he's going to play quarterback, <laughs> and he's going to be the star. Get out of the kid out of here. Do you, know we have, do you know we have a former teammate showdown on Sunday? Who? The fighting Hoskinsons play the fighting Bennings. Oh, and both of those guys are the same way. They so get off the field. Let they them got, play. They got Sit film. your ass up in the stand and let me cheer your kid from there. They're having film sessions. <laughs> it's like seventh grade. It's youth football. Let the kids go out and have fun. Yeah. When was the first time you felt like as you were growing up competing that you were in like a real intense competitive situation? High school. Yeah? No, take that back. Lily. But you have to understand, I grew up in the state of Florida. True. So, Little League football is just as big as high school down there because, yeah. I mean, you, you know, we travel three hours just to play a game on the weekends. I mean, you, you know, I grew up playing against the, the Warren Saps and the Ray Lewis mm -hmm. and, and the Tamarack Randos in Little League. You know, so right then you knew that it was going to be, hey, this is football and this is serious. Right. It wasn't, oh, I want my son to play flag football first and then we're going to think about tackle. No, I started playing tackle football when I was age six. Really? Yes. Coaches off the field. Shin pads down, the um, knee pads down to my shin. Yeah. You know, because the pants too big for me. Helmet would barely fit my head. Always oh, quarterback? I was, well, the first year I started as a fullback. Oh, really? Started as a fullback, and then they saw I can throw the ball, and they moved in everything. Then... Blocking fullback? No, running fullback. Okay. No, come on now. You didn't want to block for nobody, even back then? <laughs> Shit, no, I hated blocking. <laughs> Did you play any defense? Did, yeah, play safety. Really? Yeah, I actually played safety a couple games in high school. But, but once again, my high school was so big to yeah. where... How big is Manatee? Well, uh, it's, it's shrunk now, but when I was there, my, my graduation class was 892. 800. And so it was probably about 3,500 students in the whole school. That's 6A? Back then it was 5A. 5A. Yeah, 6A is like the Miami schools where they got oh, okay. four or 5,000 students in the school. Yeah. Yeah. Don't they have seven now in Florida? Is no, it's it, 6A. 6A is the 6A. biggest? Yeah. Okay. Yep. State championship twice or once? Play for, we played for one. We won once my sophomore year, and then we... Lost in the semifinals my junior year, and then we lost in the first round my senior year. Okay. In my senior year, we were ranked number one team going in the, in the nation, and we lost to open the game. To who? Sarasota Review. What was the score? It was 35-28. Um, oh, really? Yeah. But they Shootout. Had, oh, but they had this running back. I'm going to tell you, this kid, this, he was every bit of Lawrence Phillips. Really? Oh, yeah. This kid, he rushed for 300 some yards against us. Ooh. Yes. And then we played him in the first round of the playoff. And he rushed for another 280 yards against us. So you could, the adjustments weren't that good. He, he was just that good. Yeah. He was just, they actually lost in the state finals that year. Really? Team, yeah. Now he, 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 was, he was everything but the truth. Then he got in trouble. And the rest is history. Now he's up in heaven. Really? Yeah. Oh, my condolences yeah. to him and his family. Well, it was more, more of an illness than anything else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? We, I had a running back we coached at Omaha Northwest. Sorry to get real somber on here. Same deal. Kid was a great kid. You can ask Clinton when you see Clinton the next time. LP reborn. Mm -hmm. Coaches weren't good to him. You know, he kind of got on the wrong track. Man, he was that was a bad deal. Okay, on to bigger and better um, things. If As you, you see, we jump around all yeah, the time. So. A little scatterbrain. If you see, though, hey, Casey Thompson in this game. I got an honest question for you because you had some leverage when you were in a play would come in. You could, you could get out of that play. You could change that. How much flexibility do you think he has to change anything when the play comes in from the, from the sideline? I don't think he has any. Yeah. I don't think any quarterback in college football has the ability to change because they, if you notice, they always lean to the sideline. Yeah. And right there, the, the coach is telling them what to run, which I think it hurts him mm -hmm. because now instead of them over reading the defense, getting a pre read, they're looking at the sideline and they call a play. Now they got 99 guy ching. Oh, they call this play. So what do I got to look at for now? To mm -hmm. so, uh, let them, they're the quarterback, let them manage the game. Stay out of the game. If you, if you're, if you coach them right and prepare them right, they should become you on the field. Do you think if he's a three-year guy or a four-year guy, or he has that, that no, ability? No, because that's because the coaches want to be the ones to make the mistakes when they're changing the plays. And it's, it's just not here. It's everywhere now. Yeah, yeah. Even guys, even, even look, at, look at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You know, they got that, that quarterback is 20-something is, is years, 26 years old, six-year guy. But he's still looking to the sideline because the coach want to be the one to get them in the right play. Yeah. They want to control the game from the sideline. It too, sometimes you have to just let your athletes be athletes. Like, you can let them go out and, and make the mistake because chances are them making the mistake, 
they're going to be a little bit more fired up. Like, okay, I did this wrong, right. but I still have to make positive yards in this because if it goes bad, it's coming back to right. me. Right. That way I can at least explain, hey, coach, that was wrong, but I still got five. Yeah. And that's, that's a teaching moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you call in the play and the player makes a mistake, they say, what happened? Well, coach, you don't want to tell me to check this. <laughs> I did what you told me to. How'd that go over? Uh, I never really made too many bad checks. Mm, shocker. That was your, what was your lowest grade in the game? We got graded every game we played, so uh, a zero well, for the lineman. A zero was you did terrible. Well, I think the game where I had a couple turnovers, because, <clears throat> you know, you turn oh, the ball yeah. over at zero points. Yep. So, no matter, so that's – but – with games without turnovers, one turnover, I think it was like 94, 95. Perfect scores? How many games? No, I never had a perfect score. Never? No. He get you on the 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock step yeah. out of the – Yeah, yep. of course he did. Oh, wait a minute. One to five, you didn't carry your fake out. That's why I marked you down. <laughs> Man, shit, I was just ran the ball 70 yards. I'm tired. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. I'm going to light jog around the corner here, Coach. Yeah, get off no, my carry ass. that fake out. I mean, one game I went the wrong way, and he, yeah. my, he, and he gave me a two on it because two is one zero. And he gave me a two on it. And I said, and when that's the Colorado game. We threw a pass, yeah. threw, threw a pass, cluster, he scored. And it, it go to the film center and look at it and say, oh, I got a two on this. I say, I guess, I guess you didn't give him move this time. He said, well, so I say, I opened up the wrong way. And he looked, he said, well, I guess I could change that to a one. <laughs> <laughs> I say, so I was, you're not watching everything. <laughs> Did you, how good, I mean, in, in the moment, you know, we're, we're 20-ish, 19-year-old kids, but Coach Osborne in those meetings would be like, all right. If you get, it was always on you. If you guys do this right, this will score the first play of the mm-hmm. game. You're like, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, there's several times he, he come, we'll put in a new play, and he was like, hey, if we, if you check this right and you get the right defense, we will score on this play. And he did it twice. Yeah. Arizona State mm-hmm. and Colorado. Yeah. The first play of the game, he said, well, this is, we said, we we going to run this prep this play. If we block it right, we will score. And both times we did. I don't think anybody ever realizes how much like prep that man did. Like I, I oh yeah, he 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 had it boiled down to okay, when we go when when we make this move, like we're gonna block here, this safety will do this. Yep. And when he does that, this will then be open on the other side. Yeah, it was, it's like he, he was like a wizard. He's like he knew everything was gonna happen before it happened. Yeah. And then that was the beauty of it to where you the the great office of minds know what they're trying to do five plays before they actually do it. Mm-hmm. Because they know what their players can do, they know what they're trying to set up, they know what they're trying to do, and I think now a lot of it just fly by the seat of their pants. Yeah, type offense because it's so fast to where oh let's go oh this looks good let's try this to where you no know, everything was calculated with him. Yeah, everything. It's set up. I mean the the way that plays were set up, and it, and, it, and it leads me into Whipple because there's times where I think his play calling has a rhythm. And there's times where my key is literally just throwing shit at the wall. To yeah, see because what because yeah, man, you're right. Because when they go three or four drives and they go four plays and out or three plays and out, you know that he's just throwing stuff out because he don't know what he, know what he can call. That's mm-hmm. going to work. To where most offensive coordinators, when stuff like that start happening, what is our bread and butter? Yes. What is our base offense? That's one thing that Coach Osborne always did when we faced teams and week one we try stuff. He always went back to our base offense. Mm-hmm. And, and, and until, we, until we got in a rhythm with that, and then that's when you start adding more stuff in. Yeah. I mean, you can ask anybody sitting here watching, like, is there one thing you think Nebraska right now offensively can hang its hat on? I have one. The inside zone. The zone run. So you think that the, what they've done right now, they've shown they can hang their hat on inside zone? Yeah. Okay. The zone run, yeah. Mine is Trey Palmer on a nine route and just throw it up and hope he catches it. Well, that's just, that's just, well, you just, that's the hell man, hope and pray. <laughs> you, you can't live off that, but I think with a zone run, if they just get, if, if the offense line just get on a man, yeah, he's proven that he can make a guy miss and prove he can get positive yards. It's, it's the beauty of the zone scheme, and again, to, to rehash, but you're going to have two guys trying to block the down guys. They're both watching the linebacker. If the linebacker goes one way, the, the closest lineman gets off. If he goes the other way, the other lineman gets off. But it, it's, you're blocking people without having to block them. You're, you're getting them in motion now where your back can read it as long as everybody's on the same page. I would love to see them come out in that, and I'm good outside zone as well because I think yeah. both of them help. The only thing with me with the outside zone is their lateral mobility as far as offensive line goes, not very good. That's why, that's why I'm more inside zone. Yeah, you got to pound. You, you, gotta, you, you get a little push, and now the running back going down here. The one thing they can't do is go side to side. So I've asked you about giving up on first down, what's acceptable for Nebraska. Three to four for, yards. Yep. For you, they've got to get three to four yards three to four on yards. first down. First down. And now, now you're second and five, second and six, second and six, second and seven. 
your playbook's still open. Now you can run the ball again. You gain two yards. Now you're third and five, mm -hmm. or now you're third and four. Now there's a good chance you can you still can run it if you feel right. like you're doing things, or you can throw a little quick game or. And, and that's a, the, the play design that was against Indiana, where they motioned Palmer across, converted. I think it was a fourth down, but, but that was by design. It was in rhythm. It was in, in step with what they had run before. Right. That rhythm or, or that ability to keep that thing in third and less than five yes. is going to be huge for Nebraska right. in this game because now you, you've said, hey, we can establish this where we have a third and manageable. And third and five, is, there's, a good, there's probably a 60% chance that you're going to get most third and fives. Mm-hmm. Third and sevens, now yeah, no. just a good chance you won't, you're not going to get it. Not right now with, with the way that, that I operate. So, Hell, they can't get fourth and one sometimes. Yeah, that's true. That's, I didn't want to bring that up. Well, I was trying, it's, to, it's, trying to rehash it's, that. It's positive. Yeah, you can't get fourth and one. I'll be back. I'll be back to my shrink for that one again next week. Damn so. Buccaneers. <laughs> yeah, your bucks are bad. Oh, they're horrible. Yeah. They're bad. I mean, it could be worse, so you could have to watch Shit, the Bears. I got to go, see my therapist. I'm going to lay on that couch. You could have to watch the Bears play tonight. Mm, that's even worse. It is. It's bad. I tried to hold out hope that Justin Fields was good. I'm, I'm he is good. I'm, I'm, I think he has retention. He just don't have enough weapons. Buddy. That offensive line sucks. They're bad. They're worse than the Buccaneers line. But there's people running wide open, and he just airmails. Well, because he's running for his life. That's fair, but he's supposed, <laughs> to be, he's supposed to be athletic and be able to make that throw. Yeah, but when, you, when you're running 70 yards just to try to get you to throw the ball down the field, you, you look at Casey Thompson. He wasn't running for his life when he missed the wide open guy. That's true. It's football. But when you run the whole game, hey. You start to see ghosts. You start seeing ghosts. You start seeing lions hey, and way, tigers and bears. Totally off subject. What happened to Adrian Martinez? He got hurt. You guys uh, know he did? Yeah, yeah. What did he get hurt? I think, I think hurt his knee. He hurt his knee. He's, I think he's been hurt his knee early, early in practice that week. My K-State over nine bets taking a little bit of a hit. Yeah. Yeah, but I just think that, that with Casey, he needs to, one, don't turn the ball over. Okay. Don't turn the ball over. Hit the throws that you need to hit. Does Nebraska have the receiving core to play a ball control passing style offense yes. where we have third and five and we run a yes. six-yard route and hit it? Yes. Who do you see outside of Palmer Washington. taking that role? Okay. Washington and the tight end. That's why, we, that's why we keep saying the tight end needs to be an important yeah. part of it because that's the way you get the, 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 the seam stuff, the stuff in the middle of the field. That opens everything up. You know what I mean? Going into your second bye, is Vokalecker or the lack of his production probably the biggest letdown? I don't think far? he's fully healed. Okay. I think he's still, still injured. Isn't it still amazing? Like you're, you're a power five program. You have one guy that gets hurt, and then <laughs> your depth is so minimal. <laughs> wow. Look at, it. Look at every position on the field. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Look at the like, linebackers. Mm -hmm. Look at the defensive line. Yeah. Look at the offensive line. Yeah. The only position that really has depth is wide receiver and running backs. And probably the two that are coached the hardest. Yes. And know Rayo gets after him pretty good. Yeah, but he just don't have the depth, though. Right. So he can't get on too hard because he don't want it to break down completely. Yeah. Because you don't have the numbers there. It is a delicate balance. It's a delicate balance. I'm guessing there's a lot of post-practice meetings. <laughs> like, hey, I chewed your ass because you did this, but really – you're the only guy I have that can do this. But see, well, for me, do it but this that, that's, where I'm, that's where I'm different. I, you shouldn't have to go to the kids where I'm sorry for chewing your ass in practice. It's all about mental makeup. It's all about you Perfect. knowing that, hey, I fucked up. I screwed my life. I screwed up. Now, guess what? The coach got on me. Now, what am I going to do to prove him that I, I'm not going to make that same mistake? I'm going to get better. With that mental makeup, though, right? So I'm old school, man. You are. I agree. You have to pattern a behavior. Who, who up there can Nebraska pattern that behavior after? And, and they now have in-house psychologists, which I think is a bad deal because that's got to be a trust fall. Like, if, if I have somebody that's hired by my boss to be my psychologist, I, I ain't telling them nothing. Yeah. I'm not trusting Because you know they're going to go back and tell yeah, right. This is what we said. Like, you, can, you can tell yes. me that. You, <laughs> I may have been born at night. It wasn't last night, but yeah. I'm going to keep some of that stuff. That and they got cameras in the hallway. So if you walk they down do? the hallway to go to the psychologist, they can see you. They do? Yeah. So what well, is this, Fort Knox? Really ain't going over there now. Yeah, I'm not, no. That mental the, piece, the, the, though. The only trick I'm going to see is the one in my head. The mental piece is, I think, the biggest missing component to Nebraska turning a corner and really rallying through and winning these last games. It's not a mental. It's not mental. It's, it's something that just they've been so used to bad Correct. things happening. Until they start seeing more success – then all that stuff that, was, that they're going through now, it's not mental. It's, it's believing. To them, to me, it's more believing than anything. Because, but now they have a coach who believes in them, mm -hmm. 
who's 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 going to, going to fight with them to where they going that's why you're starting to see a change in the way they play. But mainly, I gotta say, enough is enough. That, but that, once again, that's you. But that's the, but that's that's not saying that. Oh, we need to go see a, a psychiatrist or something like that. We all have now set to be our own therapist. Correct. So it, it's called it's called self self love. Okay. Or self therapy, whatever you want. I'm not a psychiatrist, so I'm not gonna try to use those fancy words because I'm not. Yeah. But I'm saying those kids <clears throat> mentally have to figure it out. They have to figure their destiny is in their own hands. They can take that as far as they want to go. Yeah, no and they guy, have to believe it. No guy, Jack Stark couldn't tell me no. what I should be doing mentally on the football field. That's right. me. Right. And, and so if I'm out there, I got I to gotta, gotta evaluate what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Am I out here giving it to my all? Am I playing the best? Am I doing the things off the field to know when I get on the field that I'm not going to make those mistakes? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what, when things aren't going well and you don't have coaches demanding that, and you see your coaches not giving you their all, then it's like, huh, why am I going to give my all to him? this guy? He's not giving me his all. But I think now what they're seeing that Mickey and the staff now, they're coaching them, they believe in, they trust, and they want them to, do, to be successful. So now you're starting to see a totally different mindset on the field. And, and, and people say, well, you don't know that for sure. Yeah, I do know yeah, that. Yeah, you do. Because, look, they got down by 17 points. They mm-hmm. were down 10, they got by 17 points, and still had a chance to win those games. Mm-hmm. They got down to Rutgers at halftime, and mm-hmm. came back in the fourth quarter and won those games. When in the past they've proven that that happens, well, they happen, they're in they trouble. They shut down. Look what happened at, at, at Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. When the staff changed, it was Mickey's first game. When things went bad, what happened? It really went bad. Yeah. Then they had the bye week, come out Rutgers, or start off slow, but they still fought. Mm-hmm. That's how you know that there's, there's something special happening. Now. Those kids are starting to believe that they, hey, it's on us now. Mm-hmm. We got the guy who believes in us now. Yeah. So look like that make him proud. Is that enough? So we'll get into score prediction now. As, as you look at this kickoff at 2.30 in Lincoln, Nebraska versus number 17, Illinois, mm-hmm. w- what is your outcome for the game? I th- I, I, it's just something telling me that Nebraska is going to win this game. Really? Yeah. I've said it all along when I look at the schedule. I mean, when we talked about this, I said mm-hmm. there's only two teams on this schedule, or three teams on the schedule that I think that had better talent mm-hmm. than Nebraska. Yep. Oklahoma. Yep. Purdue. Mm-hmm. In Michigan. Correct. When I say everybody else they play, they either have better talent or the talent is right there. Now it's going down to who's, who's better prepared. Correct. And I think this is a game that if Nebraska goes out there and, and, and minimize their mistakes, they can very easily win this game. Cut. Do you have a score in mind? Um, I'm going to say 28-20. 20. 20, okay. 28-20. So you got them flipping the spread. Yeah. And just something just I just feel that it. was out of left field. I know it was because I'm in previous I, episode I, you were not in that camp because I, I know matchups because our goal you had talked about this. You and so I had talked see, about we got this. a heckler right now. Yeah. Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you and I had talked about this. So how important it was to go three and zero at home. Right. To win these three games at home. You win three games at home. You both both eligible. Correct. And now those that are in the camp of Mickey being the head coach, which I feel they should be in. Now you got 15 more practices because you're not going to hire that head coach while he's at the bowl game. Right, right. So you get those 15 more. It's 15 more opportunities for him to influence these young men. What do, what do, we, say? What do we always say? You got to defend your backyard. Mm-hmm. You defend your backyard, everything else take care of itself. Yeah, so you got them, okay, upset 28-20. I got them upset. And, I, and that's not me being a homer. It just, I just feel well, good you, about you, you rarely will ever be considered a homer. You, you are one to speak <laughs> Honestly, and you've called many a uh, game the other way. Um, I'm going to go with a win for the Gamblers. I'm going to go as a cover. But I just think what Bielema has and, and, and how quickly they've adopted to what he wants to do. I have this thing at, at 28-27, and Nebraska has the ball with an opportunity to win. It just doesn't work out okay. in the end. But I, I think, as they've proven, they can hang around in games, Okay. Their offense is going to show something different than any offense that, that Illinois has seen. And I think with some success and some creative play calling, but making sure that you're in control of the ball in, in that short passing game that I mentioned earlier, if you got a third and five, you're on a seven yard out. We hit that out. You keep the ball. Right. You keep Illinois off the field. You get them to start to doubt because they've never, they've been in tight games. You know, I think they knew they had Iowa under control because the Ferentz boys really don't have much of an offense. Yeah, but yeah, but they didn't do much on offense though. Correct. They didn't either. Very so, true. So but Iowa's defense, Iowa's defense, though, I think, is, is better than Nebraska's. 
and that's not saying a whole bunch, but so to compare that one is. Yeah, they are, but it's still matchups, though. Mm -hmm. It's still all about matchups. Which matchup is your favorite? Because I, 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 I thought I thought Iowa defense played worse versus Rucker than Nebraska defense did. Okay. Even though Iowa won that game, Rucker still moved the ball down the field. Very styles make fights. So, so yes. what 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 style in this game or what matchup in this game do you like for Nebraska? Let's take a move. Okay. Get in and get out. Keep going. Yeah, you know, boxing on the floor, Mayweather. Mm -hmm. I'm going to counter. Bam, bam, move. I'm not going to get hit. Okay. Boom, boom. Well, Nebraska can do that on defense. Okay. We're going to go bam, but we're not going to let you beat us deep. Got it. We're going to make you earn everything you get. If you're going to score, you're going you're gonna to be an 11 play, 75 yard drive where you do give. But you're, hey. not, you're not going to hit us with a 40 yard run. Your score represents it better than mine, but so you're, you're saying that three is better than seven yes. mentality. Yes. Yes. Ben, but don't break. We're going to give yes. you all this down to here. Yes. But Lock you, but it you're going to kick field goals. Okay. And that gets you to your 20 number. Wow. That's I pretty just, good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm fast. Hmm. I'm like a ninja with math. Yeah, no, you're not. Yes, actually, I am. You're like a turtle, you're like a turtle with math. <laughs> Slow and steady. But yeah, it, it, there is an opportunity for them, but it, it's got to be a game. They cut down on penalties in the last one. They only had four. We're down from the 13 they had in previous games. If you continue to will that number down where it's just one or two, but turnovers are, are going to be huge. Key. That you cannot turn the ball. Turno over. Turnovers hurt Nebraska versus Purdue. Yes, but you can't you can't do that in this game if you want to pull the upset at home. No, expecting the crowd to be lively. That's another thing I think the guys are going to be able to feed off of because they're seeing some of the things that you and I are seeing, where corners are being turned and, and their ability to play better, maybe play out over their skis a little bit, right. and do better in games. And people are going to expect them to. Right. That's, those are your best players on defense. So put the, put the pressure on them to cover. Yeah. Stop the run. Yeah, you have to commit. I, I'm, I'm in the camp. I'd fill the box. I'd be like, hey, here's eight. Yeah, Go stop ahead the run. And stop run the whatever run. route you want. I want to make DeVito throw it over the top and try to beat me. But Chase isn't going to be the guy. Yeah, and Nebraska hasn't gotten beat deep very often this year. <laughs> they've had breakdowns, but they've been able to rally back right. and, and cover the breakdown. Um, you got anything else for tonight? No, you have anything else for tonight? I don't, buddy. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up, Dan. I got to get back to mom football. Mom football starts at 7.30, so I got to get down. And How's that going, by the way? It's good. Um, it's, it'll be coming off of a loss. Yeah, y'all got it handed to you the other day. We did. We had a couple breakdowns in coverage that wow, didn't go over. Wow, I saw well. that score. I'm like, what? Gross is good, though. You got Gross High Coog alums over I there. I don't care about Gross. Yeah. You know, they still going to be beating stuff. <laughs> But they did. They put it to us for the first time in 10 years. They won, they won the game. And uh, that's the way that goes. We're going to wrap up this episode. Thank you guys so much for coming out. If you got any questions, we'll be sticking around here for a little bit. Go ahead and ask away. I'm a lot more friendly than Tommy, so if you probably ask me, I'll get it to him. But thank you so much for joining us here on episode 9. What does that nine, supposed to mean? Episode 9 of 5115. Have a great night. All right, thank you, guys.